Hi, I just wanted to show a general one of these difference of square cases. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that this is still a quadratic equation, it's just that weird case where the b, the middle term, is zero. So we could still use the same idea of what multiplies to give us c and adds to give us b, it's just adding to give zero. But anyway, let's take a look at this equation. What do we got? I'm doing a general one, so it's b y squared minus c equals zero. Remember, b and c could be numbers, doesn't matter. The math's still the same. So, we saw last time, for a difference of squares, we have this. As long as there's a minus in the middle and two terms like this, with the first one being squared, well, the solution, well, even if the first one was squared, the solution is still going to be square root of the first, so in this case, square root of b and the square root of y squared, which is just y, plus the square root of the second, so square root of c. Then, it's going to be the square root of the first, so again, square root of b. Once you figure out the square root of both things, you're basically done the problem. Because then it's a minus the square root of the other. All equal to zero. And guess what? We would already have factored this out. If we wanted to, and again, this would actually pro maybe be a number in many cases. So if it was, say, I don't know, 81, this would be 9, and that would be a 9. Or even if it wasn't a number that perfectly works out to a square root. Not everything in life works out to a perfect round number, so it's going to be a square root of whatever c is. Square root of whatever b is. If we want to, of course, we could solve this. So what? It's variables. We can still solve a general solution. Remember, this has to be equal to zero and or this. So, we get square root of b times y plus square root of c equals zero. So, subtract square root of c from both sides. Okay. So we get square root of b, whatever that might be, equals minus square root of c. Divide both sides by square root of b because we want y on its own. The same rules we've always been following. So what is y equal to in this case? Minus the square root of c all over square root of b. And we'll now do the same for the other. But quick thing, I mean quick trick, remember what we've been finding is always plus and minus of the same thing. So if I had to guess without doing any work, I'm going to guess the other solution is square root of c over square root of b. Let's see if I'm right. I'm fairly confident I will be. So square root of b, y, minus square root of c equals zero. Add square root of c to both sides. Might be running out of room on that side, but what are we left with? Square root b, y equals square root of c. Divide both sides by square root of b. That's ah, looking pretty good. Good to know math works the way I want it to. So what do we get? y equals square root of c over square root of b. As we said, as before, c, these two terms add to equal the middle term, which in this case is 0. So, again, whatever these numbers may be, this is the solutions we're always going to get. This is the factoring we're always going to get. Square root of the first plus square root of the second, square root of the first minus square root of the second. This is how it's going to work for all of these types of problems. So, thank you.